Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Sabrina and uh, TC for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, hope you are all uh, doing, uh, doing well and uh, staying safe during the pandemic. And um, my name is Chu Wu. Uh, I'm an assistant professor in the Department of uh, Geography at the, uh, the University of Tennessee. Today, I'm going to uh, briefly introduce you uh, to the GMAP Python package that I developed uh, during the past uh, few uh, months. And uh, you can access the uh, Google Slides by scanning the QR code at the lower right corner. Or you can uh, type a link, the URL. I also put the URL in the, uh, the uh, Zoom uh, chat box. So you're welcome to click. Uh, know that uh, the PowerPoint has a lot of uh, images. So it might take a while if you uh, scan the QR code using a cell phone. So I would recommend that you uh, use your computer to uh, look at the, uh, the slides. And so let's get started. So, Here's the outline. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about how uh, the reason behind why I developed uh, the, the package. And, and then I will briefly introduce you how you can get started with uh, GEMAP. And afterwards, I will give you some uh, resources and tutorials. And at the end, I'm going to demonstrate some of the uh, key features of the package that you might be interested in. So if you look at the right here, uh, on the right here, this animation. So this is the one that I created using uh, GMAP. And uh, you don't need any source code. Uh, you just, uh, if you like, you can click the link uh, to try it out. Uh, I can briefly uh, demonstrate here uh, if you're interested in. So basically this is a Jupyter notebook and you can turn a Jupyter notebook into a website. And then from there you can, uh, if you want to create any animation, for example, using Lenset data, uh, for the past few decades, from 1984 up to right now, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, also pay attention because I'm using kind of a, a free version. Uh, if too many people are accessing the link, uh, you might be timed out, so I don't know. But I can quickly uh, show you, for example, if I'm interested in uh, service water. So for me, uh, I would like to see uh, the service water changes on the landscape during the past few decades. All I need to do uh, draw a rectangle and then you can select anywhere and um, at, at, at the bottom here you can change the blank combination for example you can change the title you can change for example I would like this one you can change the font color uh, you can change the progress bar color and all you need to do is hit submit you can adjust those parameters and it will only take probably less than one minute to give you the animation so this give you a quick way if you want to see the changes on the landscape anywhere on, uh, on Earth, and you can use the all available landscape imagery uh, to create this kind of animation. And so you can draw a rectangle. After you finish, you can move around. You can draw another uh, rectangle. And uh, you can uh, continue to, uh, uh, just like on Google Earth, you can visualize the dynamics of the changes. So it depends on the internet speed, uh, but hopefully it will come up in just a few seconds. So what this one is doing is basically use Google Earth Engine to retrieve all the lens imagery and then combine them together to generate annual lens imagery and then to create an, uh, an animation. After that, it's going to use some uh, packages to add the text, a label and uh, uh, animation into the, uh, the GF. So, Hopefully it will work. If not, this is the world kind of something like this. So I'm hoping uh, the internet might be a little bit slow. Uh, we can come back uh, after that. So uh, first, before I introduce the, uh, the, uh, uh, the package, I would like to briefly introduce, um, because there might be some new uh, uh, OS engine users. So I would like to, you. Uh, briefly talk about the Google's engine and Google. So I'm sure 99% of you have used Google's before and uh, Google's basically just a virtual globe. You can um, navigate, you can see the uh, imagery and the buildings and terrains or something like that. But you probably noticed that you cannot do any analysis. So, and the Earth engine is the engine behind the Google's. So if you, um, if I use the analogy here, uh, Google is just like uh, image viewer on, for example, Windows computer. 
And Google Earth Engine is just like Photoshop. So we can do all kinds of uh, uh, advanced geospatial analysis, or, uh, imagery processing. And it's very, very powerful. All we need is just a browser and you don't need anything else. Uh, you just need to learn some coding skills and then you can use this to produce a lot of uh, 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 applications. And one of the very powerful thing about Google Earth is it's a data catalog. So in the past, if you, uh, if you're doing remote sensing research, probably you need to go online you need to Google and to find different uh, agency, for example, NASA, USGS, or uh, European Space Agency to download their satellite data. And so probably 70% or 80% of the time that um, for your research, you are basically dealing with the data. So Google Earth Engine is very nice because now you no longer need to download the data and you don't need to store the data. Everything is in the cloud. So in that way, you can focus more on your algorithm and your uh, research rather than managing the data. And you, you can pretty much have all the data to almost all the common uh, lens, uh, not the lens sentinel and modest and climate uh, uh, weather data. Uh, everything that you think of, if you, uh, the data that you want are not available uh, in the data catalog, you can upload data to your account so we can still have access uh, to the computational power of Earth Engine. And right now it has 30 petabytes, so uh, it's still growing. And uh, uh, I highly encourage that you to try this one out. And this is the traditional, not traditional, the uh, JavaScript co-editor. So if you first get started with Earth Engine, most likely you, uh, uh, you're going to start with this one. And so, if you see from here, uh, this is the code editor in the, in the center here, up, uh, upper center. And you have the map that you can display the data, you can show the result. On the left side is where you store your scripts and you can also check the API documentation, also your data. On the right is where when you query the data, it's going to return the outcomes. Uh, you can do the plotting, uh, that kind of stuff on the right hand side here. And lower right corner here, I provide a kind of simple JavaScript that you can, if you want to try it out, uh, you can, you're welcome to. Uh, by the way, so Earth Engine is free for uh, resource education and non-profit use. Everyone is uh, welcome to sign up uh, for uh, resource purpose. And so the, today my talk is uh, focused on the Python API. So first I would like to uh, uh, bring to your attention that the differences between these two API. So the uh, JavaScript API, API uh, if you see from the list, the bullet points in here, um, is pretty much all the Earth Engine documentation and tutorials are written using the JavaScript API. And it's easy. And also they build in our authentication. And now we can also we can have access to the Earth Engine app. But the limitation is that you cannot install any additional packages. So you rely on just the code editor. Um, Python API is, more flexible because um, most of the user, I think if you're starting doing programming, most likely you probably pick up Python uh, pretty easily. But the, the downside of the, uh, the Earth Engine API, uh, Python API is that uh, the limited uh, documentation is very limited. Uh, there are not many tutorials on this one. And, but the advantage is that you have a lot more choices, for example, in terms of IDE, you can use Google Colab, you can use a uh, Jupyter Notebook, uh, you can also um, utilize the Python ecosystem. There are so many packages that you can utilize. And one thing I will so like is uh, you can access the local data. For example, if you have a vector data, you have a raster data, you can access uh, directly and you can integrate those data with Earth Engine data. And lastly, deep learning. Okay, so this is a, a very hot topic right now. And it's nicely integrated into the Earth Engine API. It's not very easy to do with the JavaScript API. So the motivation here behind the GMAP package is that, for example, I'm trying to here compare the, these two APIs. If you're using JavaScript API, you have everything. So uh, for me, I think the Earth Engine, the, the functionality can be grouped into two categories. Uh, the first category is basically computation. And the second category is uh, visualization. So in terms of the similarity between these two uh, API, uh, the computational functionality, I think it's pretty much the same. Uh, you have all the same functions, although there are some syntax uh, differences, but the computation power is the same. The differences is the visualization. So JavaScript, if you see from this uh, 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 checkbox, uh, red checkbox in here, 
these are all available in the JavaScript API, but it's not available in the Python uh, API. So my uh, the motivation is that I want to implement this kind of uh, interactive components so that you can basically have the same thing. Uh, uh, this uh, interactive GUI, you can also do that in Python API. And this is kind of uh, the uh, uh, motivation, but this is the package that I developed actually originally was uh, because I was teaching my uh, undergraduate students how to use the Earth engine. So I talk uh, Python. And at that time it was not very intuitive because students feel a little confused because they are locked of a source code. You need to write in order to load the data into the Jupyter notebook. It's not interactive. And so I, that's why I developed the package for my students and then I released to uh, GitHub and it, it kind of uh, the community like it and I continue to work on the, uh, the, the package. Okay, so that's the, uh, the motivation. Now let's dive into uh, the package. So um, it's a basically a package for interactive mapping with Google's engine and IPy leaflet and IPy widgets. So I write to uh, later, I'm gonna sh uh, show you um, some of these uh, packages, these are very important. Otherwise, uh, the package, uh, the GMAP will not be uh, possible. You can go to the GitHub uh, link. Uh, there are lots of um, resources that I put on the uh, GitHub webpage. So here I would like to mention some of the key dependencies. Okay, so the first one, Earth Engine API. So this is the key for the computational power of the package. And the IPy leaflet and the Folium, these two packages are the plotting. So the, if you need to visualize the data, you need one of these. And the IPy widget basically is uh, similar to the JavaScript that you can have all kinds of uh, buttons. You can have a drop down list, you can have a, a input box. So this is where you can interact with the user. And the BQ plot is for the one for doing plotting. If you need to uh, plot uh, something uh, using OS engine data, for example, matplotlib or something like that. This is the uh, package that integrated with the IPy, uh, 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 with the Jupyter notebook. And Voila is the one, the package that at the end, you can turn your Jupyter notebook into on web application. Basically, you can publish your uh, notebook to the web so that people without any coding background, they can still uh, use your, uh, your application. And so the package is designed to run on either Jupyter notebook and uh, collect. So first you need to install, uh, you can install using uh, PIP or you use a uh, Conda or you can install from GitHub. I highly recommend you use a uh, uh, Conda because uh, if you use PIP, uh, if you uh, have some in existing Python uh, environment, sometimes the IPy leaflet package have some dependency conflict and uh, some users reported that they were not able to uh, display the map. But if you use Conda, most likely everything will be resolved uh, automatically. So you can check my tutorial. And lastly, because uh, the package is uh, being actively developed, so uh, sometimes I, um, I don't push the, uh, the update to, uh, to Conda or to uh, PyPy every, every day. So if you want the latest one, you can use the ggmap.update package and to install that one from basically it's similar, it's the same as this one, GitHub, but uh, you don't need Git, okay? So not every user on their computer has uh, the Git installed, but if you can use this one, run this one on your Jupyter notebook, you should be able to update to the latest uh, version. You can also use a Docker. So right now I'm working with uh, the uh, uh, Tyler Erickson uh, from the Earth Engine team to uh, hopefully integrate the GMA package into the uh, Docker image. Um, it's still a work in progress. So hopefully we have some update in the future. And like I mentioned, there are two uh, environments you can run. You can either in the Google Collab and Jupyter Notebook. And I would like to point out the differences between these two. Uh, most of the time, I would highly recommend that you use Jupyter Notebook, uh, but I also understand that some people uh, don't have the skills to set up Jupyter Notebook on your computer. You can use Colab. But uh, the differences between these two is that the Colab currently does not support IPy leaflet. So there are two plotting back and basically, when you're trying to display the data, you can either use Folium or you can use IPy leaflet. And Colab support Folium, but does not support IPy leaflet. So Folium package is more like a static uh, uh, map. Once you display the map, you cannot, basically there's no communication between the front end and the back end. Once the map is dis displayed, it's there. You can only zoom in, zoom out, and that's it. 
if you, for example, you want to use a click the mouse, you want to get the coordinates, and then you want to use the coordinate to extract the Earth's engine data, you cannot. So this is not possible with the Fourier package. I was going, uh, want you to know that. And it's very limited. Uh, you can add data, that's it. Also, make sure that you use the uh, import gmap.ee forum as gmap. So if you see the two scripts in here, um, there are some slightly differences. So if you use collab, <coughs> uh, you need to install the package every time when you run a collab section. So you need to put this line at the beginning. And then uh, you, the import, it's not import uh, gmap, it's import gmap.ee forum as gmap. And then everything else uh, are very similar. So using this package, you can use uh, access to the function map dot add layer or set center or set uh, center object. So those functions are the same as the JavaScript API. So uh, as if you're coming from the JavaScript API, I'm sure you'll be very familiar with these functions. Yeah, the syntax are pretty much the same. And the other thing I want to uh, point out is that uh, if you're using the um, uh, Google Colab make sure that at the end, <clears throat> uh, if you see the second last line here, map dot add layer control, okay? Uh, by default, it's not adding the layer control. So if you add multiple uh, Earth engine data layers, make sure you use this one. Otherwise, you cannot turn layer on and off. So this is kind of main differences between uh, the two. I also put out a notebook uh, example here. If you click the link on the left side, uh, it will take you to a kind of a Jupyter notebook, so on my uh, GitHub uh, webpage. And from there, you are welcome to just uh, uh, click the uh, icon, run in Google Colab. And you should be able to just uh, execute the call and but Kushing, you're muted. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, so this is the, about the environment, like how you can run the package. And I also published a, 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 a short article about the, the introducing the package. So uh, if you're interested, you can uh, click the link to read the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the paper. And if you find uh, the GMAP useful, um, I, I would appreciate if you cite the, the paper to uh, support uh, my uh, work. So next, I'm going to show you some uh, documentation um, how you can uh, utilize uh, the, uh, the GMAP. So I, I just recently redesigned the uh, documentation so you can click the link. And on the left side, you can go through to find some of the tutorials and, and, and uh, uh, common functions and one thing I want to point out is that uh, this one is uh, uh, nice because for each function right now, I think I have hundreds of functions in here. You can click the link. You can see the source code behind each function. So if you're interested in learning like more about <coughs> the source code behind the package, you're welcome to uh, go to the web page to explore uh, details about each function. Okay, next I'm gonna show you some tutorials. I, and in the past, I think I started uh, uh, the package started in, I think, uh, late March after we uh, moved to online teaching because of the uh, COVID-19. And then I was actually teaching the course, so I was uh, developing the tutorial for my students. And so eventually I thought, okay, maybe I'll just uh, develop some general tutorials and put online, maybe other people might find it useful. So this is what is end up with. Right now I have uh, 34, 34 tutorials and the total length is eight hours, uh, 30 minutes. And each tutorial is only 15, 20 minutes like that. Um, and you're welcome to go through because today uh, I don't have time to go into detail of each one, uh, but um, you're welcome if you have time to watch uh, the tutorial. And although it's only 10, 15 minutes, but uh, keep that in mind, uh, the most time consuming part is to develop those functions being used in the tutorial. So uh, uh, recording a tut tutorial actually is pretty easy but uh, actually it takes sometimes uh, 10 times um, uh, kind of an hour more than the, the length of the video actually to develop the package and also to um, come up with the uh, Jupyter notebook and, and, and to demonstrate all the functionality of the package. So 
I hope uh, you find it useful. And this is the list of the tutorial. Uh, you're welcome to click the link uh, uh, above here to go to the GitHub webpage. So for all the tutorial, I have a video, YouTube video. I also have a short GF animation. So if you don't have time, you can watch the animation to get the highlights. And you can also get access to the notebooks here. Because to me, I, I, I like everything to be reproducible. So everything that I, I implemented in the uh, notebook, you should be able to implement it as well. So if you click the link, uh, you should be able to navigate to the web page. And from here, uh, I have all the tutorial. Uh, you see here all the animation. And I stopped updating uh, this uh, web page because uh, this animation are, are kind of uh, the file size is big. So it takes a while to load. And I, I no longer add the animation to here. But uh, it's overall on the web page. And so 34. Uh, tutorials. I'm still working on some other tutorials, so I watch out for my uh, YouTube channel for updates. So lastly, I want to demonstrate some of the uh, features of this package so that you might have some idea. I don't have time to go into each individual one, but I want to give you an overview of what's available in this package. So in the future, if you, oh, oh I need something, and I saw that one somewhere in, in the past, then I can use this package. So first of all, if you come, you're coming from a JavaScript, um, one of the things about GMAP is that you can automatically convert your JavaScript to Python. So, uh, and, and you can do it with, directly within the Jupyter Notebook, or you, if you already have some uh, JavaScript on your computer, you can do batch conversion to just a few lines of code. You can convert all your Python script, uh, JavaScript to Python script. But I want to let you know that this is only good for the computational script. If your JavaScript has a lot of uh, interactive uh, component, for example, uh, uh, OS Engine app uh, is not going to work. Okay, so, but uh, you can uh, watch the video to see how this can reduce the time if you want to convert from JavaScript to uh, uh, Jupyter Notebook. And also you can source data, you can source all the OS Engine data catalog and just one click to import the data and then one click to execute the code. So basically uh, you have the same functionality like in the JavaScript uh, code editor, you can source the data and you can easily access the data. You can also search the API uh, documentation. So most of the time you might be searching the API all the time. So if you're working in the Jupyter Notebook, I also would like to let you know that you can also search the API and also your personal like uh, uh, GE uh, data putting from your account, just one click and you can get that one into the Jupyter Notebook uh, to uh, see. You can also add uh, legends. <clears throat> so for example, lane use, lane cover or uh, any you can customize, so it's very flexible. You can also copy the uh, color table from the Earth Engine JavaScript, and you automatically convert the uh, laser to uh, HTML. So also you can have a lot of face map to uh, choose from. If you use JavaScript API, you only have the base map from the uh, Google. So it's very limited, but here you have a way, a lot more options. You can have uh, any XYZ or WMS. Okay, there are a lot of things available on the uh, internet. So you can easily add those into the, uh, the map. <clears throat> you can create a split panel map. Okay, just like this, if you want to visualize the changes, this is just a demo. So only one line of code, you can create a map like this. If you're trying to do this one in JavaScript, uh, it might take you uh, a lot of lines of code if actually to develop. So try to simplify the process, you can do it very easily. You can also use the inspector. So in here, inspector, you can just like in, uh, code editor, you can click and you can show all the values for uh, each data layer. Okay, so it's very nice if you want to visualize quickly, uh, want to extract the pixel values. <clears throat> you can also do interactive uh, plotting. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, the Java uh, Python API because you can ut utilize a lot of uh, uh, map uh, plotting packages, for example, matplotlib or bqplot. So this one is that about using bqplot. You can uh, display the spectral signature for land set for, for hyperspectral data. Uh, you just need one click. So no, no coding required. Uh, you just add the data and then you can do the uh, plotting. You can also extract the pixel value uh, as a CSV or as a, a shape file. You can click, 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 and then all you need to do is just to uh, uh, write one or two lines of code. You can export the data. Uh, directly as a CSV to your local computer or as a swap file. Okay, you don't need to export to your Google account and then you can open uh, your uh, CSV file on your computer to visualize the, uh, the data. 
You can also create a length set time lapse. So for example, like the, like the one I show you uh, at the beginning, uh, you can draw a rectangle and then you can do animation, uh, uh, create length set time lapse for any location on Earth. You can also uh, use the so-called time series inspector, for example, uh, net imagery, one meter resolution, any location on the US, or you can use the length set data, uh, annual data anywhere. So you just draw a rectangle and then you can uh, have the data, no coding, uh, you just uh, load the Jupyter node. You can also access the local uh, swap file. So if you use JavaScript API, you need to upload data to your account. And, and sometimes it's very annoying because if you only have a very small area, you want to, want to test uh, your, your data, you can quickly use this one to load data. And uh, But uh, it's not going to work for large data set. If your swap file is very complicated, you have a lot of uh, vertices it's going to exceed the uh, uploading limit. So this is good for testing for uh, small data sets. And you can also load your local raster data set. So this one uh, utilize the X array and leave lab uh, package. And you can load your data set. So in this way, you can interact the data with Earth engine data. So you sometimes you have data on your local computer, but you don't want to upload the data to the Earth engine account. You can use this way. Uh, but uh, I want to point out that right now you cannot do analysis between these two. Uh, it's good for visualization and comparison, but it's local data. If you really want to utilize the computational power, you still need to uh, upload to the Earth Engine account. And next one, so this is like you can publish interactive Earth Engine maps to be embedded into social media. So for example, if you are on Twitter or Instagram or, or, or Facebook, you, you want to de develop some uh, maps using Earth Engine, you want to other people to access, but not everyone has the Earth Engine account. So you can actually use this one to just one line of code. You can pop the interactive uh, map and then you can put that one to uh, uh, social media and people will be able to interact uh, 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 with your map data layers, uh, zoom in and zoom out. Okay. And this might be the second last one. So this is the one actually the, uh, the demo I show you at the very beginning, right? You can turn your Jupyter notebook into an Earth Engine app using Voila. So Voila is the uh, open source package to turn your Jupyter notebook onto your onto uh, web application or website. You can also host your uh, app on uh, Heroku or Android. Uh, these are kind of a commercial, but uh, it has free version. So uh, if you want to try it out, you are welcome to do that. So it's very nice. So this is the one that you can use to publish your data. So it's similar to the JavaScript uh, version of the OS engine app. So you can so also do that using um, Jupyter Notebook. So like we see in here, you can, uh, you can have this interactive component using IPy widgets, and then you can change the uh, opacity. Uh, way more than that, uh, it's very powerful. Okay, so that's kind of the brief uh, introduction about those uh, key features. and. You're welcome to explore the uh, more tutorials on my uh, GitHub account or the YouTube channel that I have more detail about each uh, functions because of the time I don't have um, the time to get into every uh, features about the package. But if you want uh, more tutorials, okay, uh, you can uh, use my the other GitHub repo, uh, 360 uh, Jupyter Notebook uh, examples. So this is the one actually uh, I converted the Earth Engine, uh, uh, the documentation, it has a lot of like uh, examples. So I convert all the examples from JavaScript to, um, to Jupyter Notebook. So you can see the, uh, uh, the general like uh, uh, structure here is the same as the Earth Engine JavaScript documentation. So if you're reading the JavaScript uh, documentation, you want to find something, uh, the counterpart of the Python, you can come to my notebook and uh, all you need to do is just to uh, click the link and it will take you to the notebook. From the notebook, <clears throat> um, I have the run in Colab. So all I need to do is just to uh, click the link and then you should be able to run the source code within Colab. So everything is uh, uh, set up nicely so that you don't have to spend time to do the conversion between JavaScript and uh, Python. And lastly, uh, if you want uh, more tutorial or you have something that you want uh, me to implement, you're welcome to submit <clears throat> official request on my GitHub repository. You can also follow, follow my uh, blog or my YouTube or uh, Twitter. But I highly, highly recommend that you um, submit a request on the uh, GitHub repo 
they, in that case, everything is recorded. So I always, I can come back to, um, uh, fix those issues or implement those are new features. And uh, if you send me email, <clears throat> now I receive a lot of email every day. So sometimes it might be uh, inundated. So I never really get back to the email. So for example, if you see from here right now, I have already solved almost more than 100 issues from all the users. So this is um, the community. So if we report on issue, it makes the package uh, uh, better so uh, i really appreciate uh if you re or report that one on the uh, github repo and i think that's all for the uh my presentation and if you have any question you can email me or you can uh, uh ask me on twitter thank you very much <laughs>